As, as Orthodox Christian monks, our life's work is prayer and obedience. We commune with God through prayer and through obedience. And uh, we commune with Him particularly in the church services through our prayers. We commune with Him through receiving the Holy Mysteries frequently. And we commune with Him through our private prayers. And uh, we have the additional blessing as church woodcarvers of being able to commune with Him directly through our work. Our work uh, is, has as its goal the beautification of Orthodox churches and the assistance of Orthodox Christians in worshiping God through the wood carving that we do. Wood carving lends itself to prayer. It's a handicraft. And so the mind of the woodworker, although somewhat uh, involved and uh, concentrated on his work, is also somewhat free. And it's possible for a wood carver to, uh, for example, to listen to the Holy Scriptures on tape, as we do for several hours each day in the shop, to listen to liturgical chant, uh, to listen to the lives of the saints, which have been recorded as well. And we do all of these things, and it makes the work greatly edifying. It's a very beautiful and very uh, spiritually uplifting way to earn a living in this world. We, we love our work. For, and we love it for our Savior's sake. There, there's something very beautiful and very meaningful and very fulfilling about uh, making your living in life, if you will, to use a worldly expression, making your living in life by beautifying our Orthodox churches. When the priest prays at the end of each divine liturgy, sanctify them that love the beauty of thine house, that has great meaning for us as church wood carvers, and we pray that prayer with great feeling of heart. Every Orthodox Church is unique in many respects. Some elements uh, of the church architecture, of the church layout, of the plan of the iconography are the same in all Orthodox Churches. But to be quite honest, in most respects, Orthodox Churches are individual uh, are unique one to the next. I've never been in two that I think really look very much alike. And our goal as wood carvers, of course, is to create pieces of wood carving, whether it's the iconostasis or the other furnishings in the church, that are well suited to each particular church environment in which they're going to be placed. Our Savior knows for each church exactly what is the most beautiful way to make the icon screen, to make the bishop's throne, uh, to make the epitaphios, the chanter stands, all of these things. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves as monastics and as church artisans is how do we persuade our Savior to show us what is the most beautiful way uh, to make these things for this particular church? And of course, he gives us the answer to that in the Gospels. And that is uh, where he said, ask and it shall be given to you. And of course he's referring there to prayer. So we spend a great deal of time praying uh, in connection with each project that our Savior would enlighten us, that he would give us a sufficient portion of his artistic genius, of his uh, supreme understanding to enable us to make the project uh, a spiritual and artistic success for each church, for each monastery that we serve. The question of affordability often arises uh, when people are considering how to beautify their church. And uh, of course people are trying to determine, well, simply how beautiful do we want to make it and how important is it to us to make the church very beautiful. And we need to keep in mind a number of things when we consider that question. One important aspect of it is that the beauty of the church serves spiritual purposes. And uh, the church is designed to draw us out of the world and out of the worldly thoughts and the worldly cares that we bring to the church. And if the church is very beautiful, as St. John of Damascus points out in his homilies, then the church is 
much better equipped to serve its spiritual purpose. And uh, in addition to that, we have to take into account our Savior's willingness to support the beautification of the church. We see in the Old Testament, when the Hebrews were rebuilding Solomon's temple under Zerubbabel, the people were lacking in basic necessities of life, and they were complaining uh, about their lack, and God reproved them for having failed to invest what they did have in beautifying his house. And he said that if they were to do that, if they were to put all of their effort into that, he would supply them with more than they needed of basic necessities of life that they had been lacking. And so uh, if we take into account both the spiritual purposes of beautifying our Savior's house, and if we have faith in his willingness to help us in that endeavor, we can really make it our first priority and, and achieve a truly beautiful result that leads people to glorify God. Let me see.